We're joined today by Alex Black, is the CEO of Rio2. Um, they've got a project down in Chile. Um, there was a recent um, announcement in connection with regards to the environmental impact assessment, which was um, hoped to be ready this year. Looks like uh, that's had a bit of a roadblock. Alex, what's happened? Yeah, thanks, Matt, and thanks for the opportunity to clarify this. Um, obviously, as you know, I've been pretty um, prominent on, on social media, particularly Twitter, and I've had a lot of inbounds and, and I've stayed off Twitter because from a corporate governance perspective, there's, you know, I, c- I can't just answer people in, in the public realm. So I, I thought this was, would be a good way of just clarifying what the path is that we've taken over the, the life of our ownership of this project and just to give people a general feel for what's happened and uh, why this has surprised us, this this recommendation. It's not a decision, it's a recommendation by the environmental evaluation group called SEA, S-E-A, that will be voted upon by the various regional ministry representatives in a meeting which we know now will be held next Friday in uh, Copia Pope. Uh, And just so that everybody knows, all work related to uh, impact studies, environmental impact studies, et cetera, and approvals is done at the regional level. Chile decentralised everything years ago and and, uh, there's regional responsibility for the analysis and the awarding of of environmental um, studies and for the integrate, you know, the interrogation of those studies. So um, I just want to clarify that as well. Can I ask you a question? Do you mind if I ask questions as we go along? Because otherwise yeah, sure, no, it's, it's going to be so much to digest. Please so please. given it's regionalised, decisions are regionalised, there's, there's, there's no influence um, with the new, you know, the new Chilean government that, you know, we've had, obviously, you and I have just had discussions about um, the constitution, et cetera. There's been no undue influence by the new setup on this decision? This is purely a, a, a regional thing? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's the way the process should run. Right. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, the national body of sale was brought in at the last minute to oversee this decision that was being made by the the uh, the uh, regional SEA. And who, I'll explain who, 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 who contacted who? SEA Regional contacted yeah. SEA Nationale. Okay. Nationale. National. Okay. Um, Why? What, what were they? Um, what did they need help with? No, just to clarify on a couple of points, I guess. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into to that because it's just going to be speculation. Um, do they have the right to do that? I guess so. Um, but uh, that was really the key turning point of of all of this, right? And 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 obviously, I'll try and explain. Um, you know what the process was. Okay. And when you say key t- turning turning points, I, I guess I know you want to kind of run through the process, and I, and I want to hear it, right? And so, lots and lots of people have been writing into us want to want to hear it. But when you say it's a key turning point, the regional guys contacting the national uh, guys at, at SEA and saying, we "Just want to clarify a couple of points here." Um, they've come back and, at, well, I don't know, added, don't know if added value is the right phrase, but you need to come back with a few questions of their own, and you're saying that's. Being a turning point, and what what precisely well, because, because, is the recommendation because, that they're combined? Because with? CIA, CIA National have had no involvement with this whole process during the last three years. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get looked at at the national level. So you can imagine that when they're presented with something at the end, they, they don't have the experience. They don't know. I mean, about that project, right? And so they've. Um, made some observations outside of the observation period because we've been through a three-stage observation period as part of the EIA. They've made a final observation that's outside of the observation period and um, as a result of that observation that they've made, they have recommend, well, they have advised SEA Regional to not recommend the approval of the CEIA. Right, so that's and, 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 and let's be clear what it is, because we're hearing chin, chinchillas, we're hearing camelids. I mean, is it just that? I mean, is, are there water issues involved in this? I mean, what, what, why, why have they said no? That's the, I mean, I'm, that's the strange thing about all this, you know, social 
where we, we have got everything in place, Indigenous consultation, everything in place, water as we know, we took the water out of the equation, groundwater at least, um, we're trucking our water from Kopiapo, no objections, no objections to the trucking of the water, no objections to the technical aspects of the project either. Um, and this all comes down to um, essentially the chinchillas. And, uh, and, and we think the reason it has is because of the experience that happened um, you know, a couple of years ago with goldfields at uh, Solaris Norte. Now, what they had identified was a, a population of chinchillas, which they um, uh, agreed to move right, and, and got approval to move. Unfortunately, during that move, um, a couple of those chinchillas died, and that caused all sorts of problems, and, you know, hit the airwaves, et cetera. So I think since that date, you know, the antennas have been up about chinchillas, I think, right? I, I don't know for sure. But certainly that's where the focus of this observation outside of the process has come from. So that's it, that is the, the the one single issue you're dealing with. So all of the the rest of the kind of ESG makeup, which I want you to go through in a minute for me, if you don't mind, um, in, in terms of you know the the social license, etc., um, the process that you you will be employing to mine the build phase, the uh, you know it, it, the the way that mines go go into business. No other issues, just this one, which is about camelids and. Yeah, I know you said chinchillas, chin -ch chinchillas yeah, and, to the rest obviously of that, Yeah, I, I'm going to refer to them during the process as chinchillas and camelids and maybe just animals in general because okay, okay. it's just easier for to, to lump them in. But, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's all about that. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, and, and, you know, and I think fair enough. So why didn't you study them? Why was that not part of your oh, environmental study process? No, we did study them. We did study them, and that's what people need to understand. I mean, this this didn't come as a result of us go ignoring all this and and not doing the the study work that was required. So we've done extensive studies on both chinchillas and camelids, and we found there was no significant impact. And we finalised our third observation period in April of this year by stating that there is no significant impact on flora or fauna related to this project, right? So, okay. and that was from the findings of all the work that we did during a, um, essentially a three year period. Okay, so you went through a pro so what's, what's the issue? You didn't study them for long enough or didn't for a wide enough area? I mean, what, what's the problem then? No, the, 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 the issue is that, um, and maybe I should go through the 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 procedure, the observation. Let's do that. Let's do that because that'd be. Yeah. Use, I think that's useful for not just this project, for other projects. The way that what companies have to go through because the, the, you know we talked uh, multiple times, you and I, but we've also talked with other other companies. The the ex, the the environmental bit of ESG is expanding and expanding. The size of these documents, the length of these studies, the cost of these studies is is getting. Significant, and I, look, and I think all for the right reasons, and holding mining accountable for doing things the right way. So I, I don't have a problem with it, but um, you, it's it's, get, it's getting harder to, to to manage for sure. So go ahead, run us through the process you've been through. Yeah, so so let's just start from the beginning. In July two thousand and eighteen, we acquired Atacama Pacific. So that was the first time we um, started to do work on this project. In November of two thousand and eighteen we started our environmental impact study baseline, right? So we interrogated the area, the impact of the project, et cetera, back in November 2018. During that process, we completed our um, PFS in September 2019, right? Since then, we've done detailed engineering and we've taken that up to the feasibility level and that's what we're working with with our bankers and our financiers. Um, we filed the EIA in April 2020, right? So from November 2018 to April 2020, there was a lot of work done. Unfortunately, when we filed the EIA in April 2020, COVID hit. We went into a seven-month hiatus, which meant that the SEA, because the new mandate was to work from home, et cetera, they said, we're not touching any new uh, applications for any type of project 
And uh, we're going to wait until we feel comfortable that we can work on this new application. So April 2020 through to November 2020, nothing, right? We were, we were hit by COVID. And then the process was restarted in November 2020. Since November 2020, there's been three observation periods that, that are mandated by the process, right? And I'm just going to go through very quickly the, the, a, 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 about those um, observation uh, periods. Um, Firstly, just to say the EIA baseline, remember that went for a period of about 16 months at the beginning before we started the EIA and, 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 and completed a, a study. We found no chinchillas in the zone of influence of the project. Zero. No chinchillas in the zone of influence of the project. So we went to the first observation period. And obviously, SAYA are the ones that come back and observe. And they said, okay, you haven't found any in your baseline, but what we'd like you to do is set camera traps in the project area, right, in the project area, and tell us what you see. And they advised us initially, we want you to do that for at least seven days. Then they came back before we started and said, listen, listen, you know, seven days, we, we changed our mind, we're going to make it 30 days. What actually happened was we thought, okay, they've asked for 30, we'll do two months, we'll do 60 days of observations. And, um, and the result of those observations in the project area, remember, this is the area that's impacted by the project, zero chinchillas, right? Zero chinchillas. So that was the finalization of the first observation period. Then in the second observation period, they said, what we'd like you to do now is to extend your observations outside the area of influence of the project, right? And we said, fine, you know, if you want us to do that, we'll do that. And we did 30 more days of camera observations outside of the area of influence of the project. During those observations, we found one chinchilla, and that was in the valley to the west of the, uh, of the project, and to the west of where our final bit of our final bit of the project on the west side is the truck workshop. So on a valley at the bottom of the truck workshop, outside of the zone of influence of the project, we found one chinchilla. So that's what happened in the second observation period. It was all documented, right? It's all been documented. In in the, in the um, third observation period. We got no more questions from SEA Regional about chinchillas within the project area, right? No more questions. What they did ask for was, can you do more work in that valley outside of the project area and set some more camera traps and just tell us what you see? And what we observed um, was we saw 19 more chinchillas in the valley outside the project area, all documented, all put on the table as part of this um, EIA process. So just to, just to summarise what is a chinchilla, obviously a chinchilla is a, a small furry animal um, and it doesn't live at high altitudes. It lives in areas that are protected like valleys, like where we observe these chinchillas, and, where, and near vegetation. Right, so you need to you need to understand that about about the chinchillas, and and what people need to understand is where our project and our project, you know, the pro project of influence or or the area of influence of our project is located. Our plant site is the lowest point in the in the project area uh, of influence. That's at, located at about four thousand three hundred and fifty meters above sea level. The pit is located at 4,900 metres above sea level. Um, and so these chinchillas don't typically go to those elevations, and we've never observed a chinchilla at those, observation, at those elevations within the project area of influence. We've observed them at lower altitudes, which we're not impacting, right? We're not impacting. So the chinchillas, there was lots of discussion, lots of to and fro, and I've just explained to you where we ended up with the chinchillas. 
So do you want me to move on to the camels? Well, and yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, please, because if these are the things holding you up and potentially, you know, destroying shareholder value or not, not a lot, you know, if I want to understand, is this something that's terminal? Is this something that's going to be short term that needs to be addressed? Or I don't think, I don't, I don't think it's going to be terminal. It's, right. It can be, it can be addressed, but I just want to explain it because. You know, go, you know, go for it. You, you, you a lot of people right? shot. Yeah. yeah, and I've got to—I've got to say—I'm going to mention something that um, you know maybe some people will find um, a bit polarizing, but and it's a person that has written some really good pieces on this event, and that's yeah. Mark Turner from IKN News. And now, I would Mark, agree. I would Mark, agree. I, I will put the links below this this video because I've actually read those, and I knew you were going to say that. Um, he, he had really thoughtful pieces, really informed pieces. Um, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I would I would highly recommend that people go to his blog and have a look at the pieces that he's written about this. Now, um, he's not he's not taken any sides. He's just put it out there and he's done some good analysis. So please, despite whatever you think about Mark Turner, I know there's polarized views on Twitter about him. Please go and check out his blog in respect to this. He's done a great job. Anyway, let's move on to the Camelots. So the camelids, we know that camelids are in the area, right? The reason we know camelids are in the area is because we're located at the closest point to our, our project area of influence. We're located three and a half kilometres away from the Tres Cruces Nat National Park. And the Tres Cruces National Park covers the Maracunga Salar to the east of the project. Should, should, we, should we just tell people what a camel is? It kind of, to me, looks like a cross between a Oh, yeah, so camelids, and an camelids, camelids, when I say camelids, I'm summarising Wanacos and Vicuñas, which are like small llamas, If for those who don't know anything about, yeah. um, you know, um, South America. So we're located close to the Salar, and that's where they all congregate. That's where they spend a lot of their time because there's water, um, there's wetlands down there. Uh, and remember, the Salar is at 3,750 metres above sea level. Remember, our project is much higher at 4,900 to 4,400, basically. And um, they do, I mean, uh, camelids are migrational and they walk around and they obviously past things, right? So what we observed, and we did nine um, observation campaigns during the period of this November 2018 to January 22, and we observed the camelids. Now, when, when, when we did the observation of the camelids, we asked the sayer, we said, well, how do, you know, what do you want us to do from the observation perspective? And they said, look, there's two options available to you. One is to put GPS collars on the camelids, and the second is to visually monitor. So both, both are acceptable. And we engaged a camelid expert. We also engaged a chinchilla expert in our other work that we did on the chinchillas. I mean, we, we, we're not just doing this out of our, off our own back. I mean, we, we're using experts. So we got a camelid expert, and he said, listen, this whole thing about GPS collars on camelids is, re is really not the way to go. Why? Because putting a collar on a camelid is, you know, very difficult. It stresses them out and it can make them behave in a way that they don't ordinarily behave because they've got this collar on and you just traumatise them by, by catching them and, uh, and put this collar on. So he said, my recommendation is go the second route, which is the visual monitoring, which is what we did, Right. So that came from independent expert and was also recommended by SEA, right? And as these camelids are, mig are migratory and they walk around, um, we observed some crossing our access road to the project, right? Outs I mean, obviously the access road is part of the area of influence, but it's, it's, it's not where the project is. It was at an altitude of 4,200 metres. Remember, our project is 4,400 to 4,900, and this is happening at 4,200, where we observed some in the, in, in the area of our access road, but none in the project area. So in conjunction with our expert, in conjunction with the monitoring that we did, those campaigns that we did of, of, of nine, nine separate campaigns, um, 
we we deduced no significant impact as camelids will adapt it. And we've been told, I mean, the, the camelids, even though they might cross our access road, um, once there's activity on that road, they'll just deviate and go around. And obviously what we'll do is put everybody on alert to the fact that there may be camelids and, you know, be careful and, and you know, be respectful of, of camelids if you see them uh, along the access road. We also, as part of the observation period, we said to SEA, but don't worry, you know, we don't think there's any significant impact, but what we're prepared to do during the whole time of the construction of the project and also for the life of the mine, we will continue to monitor the camelids and provide you with feedback about what they're doing in that area. Now, just remember, camelids have been studied significantly in that area because of the Salah. So there's a lot of data in the public domain um, and in the environmental domain of the behaviour of these camelids and where they live and where they walk and what they do. So our work was really in relation to let's make sure we know what our project has from an impact perspective. And as I said, the only um, impact that we saw was where they crossed the road um, you know, at, a, at an elevation of about 4,200 metres, right? So, so that's the story at the, uh, of the camelids. So then we got to the observation period three, right? So, so camelids were observed through the whole process. But at, to, to terminate the whole process, you know, we got to observation period three, there were no more observations. And what we stated was we found that there was no significant impact on both flora and fauna within the project area of influence, full stop. And we finished all that on the 25th of April of 2022. Now, during all that period, this was natural process, right? Tell us what you see, come back to us, blah, blah, blah. We did all that, right? Um, you know, we did all that. So um, then we led up to the meeting of June 22, which happened last week. Um, where the recommendation was made. Do you want to ask me any other questions in the lead well, yeah, up? To yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't want to stop you because because it's interesting to understand that 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 flow and give you the chance to outline the, the detail because I think it's some of the some of the accusations I think thrown at you or you know, um, that, that we've seen is that you should have seen this coming, right? Um, why didn't you see this coming? You, you clearly didn't do enough work or care to do enough work on the environmental things. So I, got, I, got, I just want to interrupt you there, Matt. Yeah. I've got to stand by my team, right? The buck stops with me. I'm the CEO, right? Uh, the buck stops with me. So I'm ultimately responsible. But I have 100% confidence in my team. And irrespective of this event occurring, I still maintain my 100% confidence in what we did and what my team did to get to this point. There was nothing more that we could have done to get to, 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 to have got to this point. We did everything that we were asked to do. We engaged independent experts to help. Um, we did everything, right? And this was a long process. Okay. You did, you did everything that you were asked to do in consultation during that period. I, I, I hear what you're saying, okay? But SIA at a national level stepped in outside the consultation period and, and, and they're allowed to, you know, put, put these questions to you, aren't they? I mean... You, you, well, I know you've got to be careful you, 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 because like, what's going to happen now, right? So SEER is going to make a recommend, has made a recommendation that the uh, EIA is um, not given to you. But there's another step in the process, isn't there? So when's that happening? Uh, yeah, so there's a vote amongst the various um, uh, political um, uh, bodies that have been involved in this whole process, right? It's not just SEER. I mean, the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Mines, Ministry of, you know, all the various ministries that have been involved. At a national has, level? or no, 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 at a regional level. Regional right? level, right. So CIA regional, regional has got to walk up to those other and regional. All those, all those regional bodies, right, yeah. because national don't have anything to do with this, right? Got it. I'm telling you, they don't. But what CIA, um did was they got an opinion after everything had finished, after all the three observation periods, 
and SEA National have, have made additional observations about the, um, the chinchilla and camels, right? And that's fair and enough, isn't it? I mean, if 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 the regional guys didn't see it, it is the fair enough. Guys did, I, I, fair I, enough. I, look, I'm not going to get involved in the politics of things, but it is fair enough. But the thing that needs to be stated is they haven't been involved in this project, right? So whatever comments they've made, it's based on a last minute review of something that they haven't had an intimate involvement in. That's all, right? Okay. So, okay, so so so, let, let, so explain the explain the process then. So so when 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 is this vote then? So we've 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 found out that the vote will happen next Friday, the seventh of July. Okay, real quick. Um, so at that point, if they say yes, what happens? If they say no, what happens? Well, obviously, um, if they say what, what what can happen, and there's been precedents. We've we've dug up at least half a dozen uh, precedents where a recommendation from SEA has been made in the negative and the vote has gone positive. There are examples of con- con- Conditionally, though? Um, uh, potentially. As in you, well, must, I, I you must perform the, these following acts. We'll give it to you, but you must continue to monitor. You I, must I, I don't know. To I, I, I can't. I can't. I haven't okay. analysed each one of those. I, I've, okay. Obviously, we've been working with our lawyers and, and, and our consultants about whether this precedent has occurred. So I need to tell everyone, by the way, that um, you picked up a new strain of COVID. So you're doing this at, at death's door, aren't you? You're, you're not feeling particularly well. So, well, so I need to, and you're doing it on a Sunday afternoon. So I really appreciate this. This is really- On Wednesday night, on, beyond. on yeah. Wednesday night, the bomb went off and on Thursday I was diagnosed with COVID and, and, and oh, here I'm man. Here, so. Oh man, okay, anyway. well, uh, th- thanks for, thanks for Battling, through. No, no, I appreciate that's it. That's all right. I mean, it's like a bad cold. Um, so, so, um, yeah. So, so, say I have done that. Now, what's what's going on um, at the at the uh, at the local level? And obviously, we can't get involved in politics about this and that, whatever. Of course, what not. we all we can do is put on the table what we were asked to do, what we did, what we did over and above. Right? We went outside the project area. Correct, you know, with with regards because Sia asked us to go outside the project area and do some analysis. The results were found, but they're not impacted by the project. The chinchillas, you know, the the camelids. We did what we what we the two options we had. We we selected the visual option and we did that. And plus, we've added that to the environmental work that's been done in the past around the Salar and the wetlands of the Salar to paint the picture of what happens with these camelids right in that area. So can I ask before I forget, which is like, okay, next Friday, there's a vote, all the interested parties. Um, is that SIA presenting to them? Is that you presenting to them? Do you both present to them? Or is it just literally a document which they will have to have read by the day of the vote and make a, a, a decision on their own? I mean, how, how, how much influence comes to bear, um, you know, in terms of what, both sides can bring to the table on the day. The great thing is that, yes, we will, will be in attendance and so will our okay. consultants and so will our legal counsel and so will, you know, uh, and so will all the groups that have been involved in this process along the way. Including now, SIA. Including SIA. Including SIA. Now, we don't, we don't expect to change the opinion of SIA. Na- national SIA won't be there. It'll be the regional SIA, right? Because this is a regional... Yeah, yeah, and had they... Pre- had, had the regional SIA pretty much been one part of the process the whole way along for the last few years uh, and sort of okayed it and they were just trying to looking for validation from the national body of SEA or have they not may have they not given you any indication w- which way they might uh, fall in terms of their, their decision their recommendation no they they don't uh, they run the process they're an administrative body mm. and and obviously they can observe and they did observe. And we, we, we answered their observations, okay. right? Now, the fact that they've gone to the national body is their prerogative. I mean, you know, there's nothing outside the law that says that. But this is a regional process. And the people that will vote or the entities that will vote on, on next Friday are regional-based, not, not national. 
and national SEA will not be at this meeting. However, we expect that national, uh, that, yeah, that, that regional SEA and um, the uh, agricultural ministry, because this comes under agriculture, you know, flora and fauna, we won't get their vote because they won't want to rock the boat. That's our general feeling, right? Okay. And, um, but there's a lot of campaigning going on and obviously we cannot get political. As I've said before many times to people, cannot get political, cannot control metal prices. All we can control is what we do on the ground. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with our lawyers, with our in independent consultants is putting together our case, as I've sort of outlined to you, I mean, what I've outlined to you is very broad, um, that we'll put on the table and, and say, hang on, despite this observation that's been made outside of the process, these are all the things we've done. Now, and on the lobbying side, we have a lot of allies in the Atacama region. We have the governor of the Atacama region. Does we he have a vote? No. No, no, but he's an ally, and he he can he can lobby, right? We you know we we're not going to be able to lobby. But, then, but the other side's coming to the table with two no's already, probably, probably, right? How many votes are there in total? And eleven. Eleven, eleven. right? So, so there's already we're starting. We're starting from the first minute. There, there's, there's two, two no's. groups. There's two groups under under um, agriculture. There's CONAF and SAG, and and they along with SIA will be three no votes. Three we, no we, votes. Okay. And so we, and is, we it, is, it, is it a just because it's 11, do you just, it's first, first to six or, or more? Yes, is first to six. It's 50 okay. plus one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 Governor of Atacama Region, the presidential delegate of the Atacama Region, Corproa, which is a business group of the Atacama Region, are all up in arms about this um, recommendation. Remember, it's a recommendation, it's not a decision. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, right? So um, now, what can happen at the vote? Let's. Do you want to go through that? I mean, I, 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 I no, I, I do want to go through. And I, you know, and quite frankly, if people can't be bothered listening to this, then you shouldn't be investing because there's the kind of details yeah. you just don't get to see or get access to. So go for it. Yeah, and the, and the reason I'm saying uh, the reason I'm doing this interview, Matt is that irrespective, this is little tiny Rio 2 and who gives, you know, who gives a hell about Rio 2? This, from what we've heard, has sent shockwaves through, through, the, through the mining industry, particularly. I wanted, I wanted to go there. I wanted to, that, that, I wanted to go there at the end, and I will go there, there, there at the end because South America has had a pretty shitty 18 months, two years in terms of political turmoil in multiple countries and jurisdictions talks of nationalization just don't continual talks of nothing don't help right um and this esg phenomenon which we which we see which has risen and whatever whatever you think of it and whatever you you know what one thinks of it it matters and moments like this have such a big knock-on effect for potentially for other projects because you you could be you know you could be used as the kind of a, 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 no sorry political um, scapegoat. You know, you could be used as uh, a, another kind of goldfield snore where we are just not that into mining at the moment, despite what it, the contributions was GDP and obviously for Chile, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, there's lots going on in other, multiple, uh, other jurisdictions too, where it, it just seems slightly, well, hard to call. And what all people want in any of this process, certainly from mining, is a certainty of a process. If you do things the right way, you know, spend the money and the time doing it. You sh you can get projects in, into production uh, with without some left field action, uh, which is more politically driven. So I I, I you know, partly I want to understand that from you, but I think the knock on effect, if it was, if it did, you know, if if it was if if it was, if it was terminal or if this dragged things out for five years, I think investors would be looking to um, well struggle to invest in South American projects going forward. That, that that's why I think yeah. it's such a big deal, right? So I want to I want to know, you know, is this just due course and process, which they are absolutely entitled to, and you know, hold you know mining CEOs' feet to the fire and get them to do things the right way in, in the new improved environmental 
process way? Or is, is there a bigger agenda here, which is for investors to stay the hell away from South America? I hope it, it, I hope it's not the latter. I don't think it's the latter, but those are the conversations that are going on. Well, I want to, I want to prove that it's not the latter, right? And I've been waxing lyr- lyrically, as you know, about Chile being open for business during this change in government, that, you know, there's been no red flags in respect to our project, and there hasn't been, right? Um, you know, social, technical, um, water, all those sorts of things. And don't forget, if you read that press release uh, that we put out the other day, mm. SEA have reported back and said, we've done everything needed within the environmental process to be awarded the various permits that we need for this project. So in one breath, they're saying we've done everything we need to do. However, there's these observations that have been made by National SEA. So okay. let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go back. So, I'll, you know, we're working our best, you know, our hardest to try and resurrect this issue because, you know, Chile has been good to us. It has been a great place to do business. It has been, you know, very transparent. Um, and so we just want to make this project a success. But let me just go back to the, um, uh, the, the, the uh, potential results of the uh, process. Mm-hmm. So obviously the best case scenario is that we go to the vote and we get more than six votes uh, or six votes or better um, in favour of the project the project the, 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 or in favour of the EIA, the EIA will be awarded, right? And there's no comeback, right? SEA and whatever. I mean, nobody can appeal from the point of view of the government bodies that participate. Who can appeal are individuals, et cetera, who feel, you know, slighted by the project or whatever, but we don't, we don't anticipate that. But the government bodies who voted no cannot appeal that decision. So we will get awarded the EIA and we will move ahead. Okay. So six votes or more, EIA gets allocated and you crack on as usual. You, and I want to talk to you about funders in a second, their attitude to all of this in a second. Um, if it's a no, by whatever whatever level, and it is, and the no's on the basis of the Chichia, Cam, you know, Camelid, um, Vicunas, Guanacos, whatever, whatever that, whatever. The, if it's just a no on that basis, is, is that what people are voting on? They're voting on the EIA in 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 its in total, or are they voting on the, on the specific issue? I just want to be clear. In total. The in total right. Okay, so maybe others can come to the table with other issues. Is that is that a possibility? No, no. Well, because because we've received letters from each of those uh, groups. Uh, in fact, eight of the groups, we've received letters of, of support previous to this um, uh, recommendation. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Eight letters of support, well, three eight, eight indications that's 11. Of support. Yeah, I mean, you know, right. but okay. obviously before the recommendation, what, we've, what we don't know is what sway this recommendation will have. But let me, let me just go through the various options. Come on, yep. So you heard the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that they um, vote no. They're swayed by this recommendation. They vote no. What happens there? Well, we would we would then sit down with Saya and say, well, what do you need us to do to placate whatever concerns you have in respect to these various animals? And we'll do it. Right now, I don't have any idea of timing or, or whatever, but we would do it. And what we would have the opportunity to do, and we're still trying to work it out, is either amend the EIA to include that portion that they've requested us to do and they've demanded us to do, or secondly, um, we uh, refile the EIA. Right now, refiling the EIA, it's not as like we're going to start from from scratch. We don't have to do the social again. It's all been done. We don't have to do the technical again. It's all been done. All the, 95% of the EIA is all okay. It's just this 5%, right, related to, to, uh, to fauna that we would have to 
redo. So that's the worst case scenario because I don't know what that would take from a time perspective. Okay. The middle, the middle ground is something that we're contemplating now where we may get a conditional approval, right, and where we say, okay, give us the approval subject to additional work that we're prepared to do. Once again, I don't know the period of time yet. We're working that out, um, but it could be a few months of additional work to, um, to, to, to get it. So conditional approval, that's, that's the middle ground. So there's the extreme approval, the other extreme, no approval and, 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 and do the work and refile or um, get approval, conditional approval. So there's three outcomes. Okay. And, and I don't think, you know, what we're steering away from is that, um, you know, uh, no vote, right? We're steering away from that and we're trying to make sure we ring fence those other two options. So you, you've, given three, you've given three scenarios there, none of which are this, this project's dead, right? Is there a scenario in which no, this no, project is dead? No, no, no. And that's one, one of the reasons I'm here is because obviously, you know, I've heard and I've stayed away from social media, but I've heard people say, that's it, this is finished, this is dead, Chile's dead, blah, blah, blah. It's not, right? We will resurrect this in some form or another, but we just don't know what direction it will it'll end up going, right? But there is a solution, right? Unfortunately, for a company like us, which is a one-asset company, time and money will be impacted. Right, that's the unfortunate thing. Well, the, 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 there's there's the biggie, right? You you're financed, fully financed, right? Through production, you have yeah. got to deal with Wheaton in place. Um, this that can't have been an easy conversation with Wheaton, can it? No, it was very easy. What's you know what? I want. I've got to say about Wheaton. You know, Wheaton are not dummies. You know, they've they've been they've funded projects all around the world. They've seen worse things than this. And I love talking to the Wheaton guys because they're practical and they're technical and they understand what's going on. I can tell you that the meeting with Wheaton was a great meeting. They're very supportive. They obviously, you know, are hoping for the best, but they will be standing by us irrespective of what the final decision is at any one of those three options. So I've got to say that about Wheaton. I mean, they're, they're, they're a great group, group to do business with. Secondly, we've been working together with BMP and SOPGEN um, on the um, on the um, senior secured debt, obviously that senior secured debt doesn't come into place until we get our construction permit. So they're not directly impacted by this from a time perspective. But they've completed all their technical due diligence on the project. They're very happy with the project, and they're currently working on their financial models, etc. So, but they they have said, look, you know, good luck with all this, and you know, we're there, you know, once this project you know gets gets on the right track again. So. So, so that's that's where we are there. Um, but well, so, people- so before, before we dive off of that on on, on, the, on the money side, obviously, um, with the various scenarios that you've outlined, you can't tell us right now, t- t- you know, how long it, if it's if it's negative, and you have to, you know, implement certain processes to, to meet the SEA's demands. You don't know how long that's going to drag on for. But it is a case if you can't do anything, everything's got to stop, um, or will be things that you can get on with, plus whatever it costs to do the implementation of SEA's recommendations. Um, how much more money per month would you be burning through? I mean, you, I don't know. you know what I mean? If it goes on for like one month, Fine. Well, if it goes well, on for twelve. That's, is that a problem? No, we, you know, we got we got to divert any money and all money towards getting this uh, situation resolved. So, unfortunately, you know, we've been in pre-construction and we've got, um, you know, our camps finished. I was up there two weeks ago inaugurating the new camp. Our, um, you know, the fabrication of the tanks for the Leach project have been finished. They need to just be trucked up to site. The uh, building that will, will envelop the processing plant is up on, not at site, at our infrastructure site at uh, Lindsay, um, a campsite, uh, is all there. The foundations for the, um, for the plant is all there at, uh, at our infrastructure site. Um, you know, we, we've, we've done quite a lot of work 
you know, in, in preparation for this project, as we alluded to everybody. So, so we've been spending money. What we would have to do is stop all that, right, is stop all that. Uh, we've ordered pumps. We've ordered, you know, all sorts of lead items, you know, um, gen sets, et cetera, are, are in, 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 um, on their way. So we're going to have to look at everything related to the project and work out what we can stop and where we need to devote our time. Now, you know, that GNA and other things will need to be reviewed as a result of that, whatever that period of time is. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we have to do all that analysis and we just haven't, you know, we, we, we haven't done it because we, we don't know what the end result's going to be. But, um, you know, right now we've got uh, 15 million US in the bank. Um, some of that's called upon, um, but... You know, we, we we just have to look at where where we're sitting. So, I mean, what did you think? Obviously, you had to put that announcement out, and you must have been obviously disappointed, but at the same time, I guess happy. No one, no one was talking to you about water or social <laughs> license, right? Because you've been fending that one off for the last two years. Um, wow. So that's in, in a way the, the best worst case scenario, right? You want, best case would be obviously get get the EIA uh, um, recommendation, and obviously you still got to vote on it on, on Friday. You've explained that. I think that's fine. But the market reaction was brutal. Went from like fifty five cents to twenty two cents in a day. Right? No. Did you did you expect they would? They would like, don't get me wrong. I, and I need to, to declare, and I think I'll be on the front of this video anyway. It's like. Um, I, t- I saw that and I was like, okay, I'll be picking up another $100,000 worth of stock here. For, for me, it was like, I thought it was an unbelievable response from the market. Maybe people were reading headlines and not the detail. Um, who knows? But were you shocked at the the veracity of the response? No, because we're pr- predominantly dominated by retail investors, so they're going to do what they're going to do. Uh, mm. I can say that, um, I've had overwhelming messages, text messages, emails, etc., from people supporting us, saying if anybody can turn this around, it's the Rio 2 team, and I totally agree with them. Um, we've had large shareholders. I've talked to all the larger shareholders, Eric Sprotts, the, um, uh, there, there are various others that I've spoken to. They didn't sell. Um, um, and are very supportive of of. of sticking with us during this process. Yes, I expected the sell-off. I haven't even looked at the market. I haven't even, the, the, the moment I knew about this news, and I, I gotta tell you that the way it works in Chile is that once a decision like this is done, it's all public in the, in the Chilean EIA system. And so we front, front run it um, so that we weren't responding to press or anything else the next day. We, we just came out as soon as we could at the open, so we worked Till the early hours of the morning on uh, on um, whatever day it was Thursday morning to um, to get this press release out so that you know we were we were front running the the news so so yeah I mean and and a lot of people have asked and I've got to put this out there a lot of people I've I've seen notes uh, you know um, going around saying well why aren't insiders buying this and and you know that would be a show of confidence for all this unfortunately because of governance. We're in, we're in a blackout, right? right? As soon as you put out something like that, we're in blackout. And we're in blackout until until after the vote next Friday. So we cannot buy or sell any shares during that time. I would love to, but I can't, right? So that's why insiders are not touching the shares at this moment is because by regulation, we're banned from doing that. So, um, you know, that's that's where we're at. Hopefully, everybody's got a better colour uh, for what's happened. Um, this is a very broad overview that I've just given, it, it, you know, and 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 really all you got to know is that in the background, on the political side and on the technical side, there's a lot of work going on in preparation for this meeting on Friday. Good. Well, like, Alex, um, let's, let's leave it till then. I mean, I... I I don't know how oh, no, I, want, I want to be back. I want to be back after that. Um, that be does that does that get voted on the same day? Is it a show of hands, or do they have to go around? Yeah, and no, we'll, obviously we'll we'll probably be asked to leave the meeting. I mean, the, the technical component will probably be at the at the beginning, 
and then there'll be a, a vote after that. And then obviously it'll be towards the end of business on, on Friday, I'm sure. So Monday morning we'll have to re release the results. Okay. 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 Brilliant. Well, let's and let's um let, let's 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 talk then. Let's do this again then. I hope you're better, uh, feeling better. Um, better. I'll be I'll better by then. Well. Yeah. I'll be better by then. But but you know, um, I, I don't think I can be any clearer than what I have been. No, it's been really useful. You know, uh, I I I hope for all the people that you know have supported us that have invested you know a lot of people invested a lot of money in in us in in relative terms to their to their uh, net wealth so all, all i can say is this ain't over we haven't given up we haven't done a bad job and we will do whatever we can to get that eia approved either on friday or uh, conditionally um um you know at the same time